with no further ado, um, Spring and I go back to, I, I, I'm going to say maybe 1990. I have to really do the math, but Spring, you'll, you'll have to fill us in. Um, Spring, Spring has one of been one of my dearest friends for a, a long, long time. We ironically met through my business partner, Jim Batcher, who I'm sure many of you, if not all of you know, Jim. Uh, Jim and Spring played together in AAA in Vegas. And Spring and I, we had this natural bond, not just because of our love for the mental game, um, but Spring, he'll let you know uh, in, in a very honorable way. Uh, he had an absolute cannon, and the reason he had an absolute cannon is he played a ton of long toss and aired it out and threw a ton, and he didn't know what a throwing program was, I guarantee you that. Um, and um, I just have, I have so much I want to say about Spring, but we'll, I want to get to him, but I, I just have to say on a personal note, um, he's just been there for me for so many years. We have spoken together at so many clinics. Um, I love listening to, Sp I've heard Spring talk. 50 times. I love it. Uh, we used to do camps out here in LA. I'd have Spring come out and talk to our kids. Um, Spring and I have played in doubles tournaments together in tennis. Am I, am I missing anything, Spring? Um, so I, I want you to know it's, it's um, like all the guests today. It just means so much to me. These guys take time out of their very busy day with family to hang out. And I'll tell you the reason why. It goes back to the fact that we all love teaching. We love, all love helping. And we hopefully will be a resource to enrich people's lives. That's why we all teach. Um, so with no further ado, Spring, why don't you give us a little intro and then we'll open up for questions, brother. Sorry, I got to unmute you. You there? You got me now? We good? We're good, brother. I'm okay, already, but I already can't wait. Well, it's good to be here, but I, I'm so computer illiterate, like my computer, I couldn't get it, so I'm on my phone. So I hope nobody calls. My kids are already texting me, Dad, let's go on the Duffy. Uh, but it's good to be here, man. I mean, I, I love what you do, obviously. We've been buddies for a long time, and you're right, man. I mean, I could throw, and that was my tool. And it's because I played long toss. I played it with bats. I played it with any outfielder. You know, I was never on the line letting somebody else dictate how far I threw. You know, I, I, I felt that I had to, you know, show scouts that I could throw and, and do something in baseball. You know, I played 14 years in the minor leagues, and it was like, you know, every infield I took, I was ready to throw as hard as I could throw. And, you know, it's one of my lines, one of your lines. If you can't play long toss, one, your arm's not in shape. And two, when you play long toss, you're building bullets. You're not losing them. And I mean, I, I, uh, 120 on a line, I'm just like, what? Dude, that, that's when after I played catch for 300, 350, yeah, on a line, it's a cannon. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, I usually start my, my, my intro on, on, you know, who I am, what I was taught, what I was when I started. I was 4'11", 90 pounds, freshman in high school. I was told my whole life, you'll never play in college, you'll never play pro, you'll never play in the big leagues. And I did it all, now I got Major League All-Stars calling me. So it's like... You know, they were wrong. And, you know, when you start, you know, everybody's got a story. And I love my story, man. I, I, I love what I teach. I can't talk hitting without talking about the mental side. You know, I bailed, I lunged, I had a bad eye. Uh, but I could, I could hit because I was a better competitor and I was a player. And once I learned, you know, the mental side of hitting and the mental side of competing with confidence. You know, if we had a game tonight, every single one of these players are going to compete. They have to. They're in the game. And I'm saying if you're not competing with 100% confidence, something's wrong mentally. And I figured out what it is after 40 years of being in the game. It's usually yesterday's bad game mindset playing today. But yet I got a new game, new pitcher, new hero every day that you play. But we get stats involved. And, you know, I nailed it 20 years ago when I called the bad never Satan. It's the biggest trap in the game. I hit three balls right on the screws right at somebody. I beat the pitcher. The pitcher knows I beat him. The pitcher's mom knows I beat him. My bad never goes down. And I think I failed. Now the wrong Steve Springer started playing. And when you say, I don't care what I hit anymore, but it's like freedom and it's freedom from yourself. And that's what we're looking for. You know, if you like your abilities and your abilities aren't showing up, it's not your abilities problem. It's what you're thinking. And when you play every day, like it's opening day and, and I don't give a crap mode about me. It's not about me. It's about me helping my team to completely different players. Doesn't mean you get three hits. Doesn't mean you win every game, but it means the right guys playing. And as coach, I mean, if I'm coaching, I mean, I, 
I got some buddies that are new major league managers. And I just told them, I said, if I give you any advice, bro, your only job is to get, how do you get 25 confident players showing up every day? And when you do that, it doesn't mean you win every game. Doesn't mean they get three hits. Doesn't mean they pitch for every game, but you got 25 confident players playing. And that's all we're looking for. Let the other team play with a 50 man roster. Because every player's got two players in them. I got confident you, a good player, and I got non-confident you who sucks. And he plays too much. So when we get the right guy playing every single day, that's what I try to teach. Well, let's do this. Um, let's open it up. Uh, last session worked well with, with hands raised. Um, so if you have a question, Fire away. Fire away. If you're not on mute, not on mute. please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. And, um, and um, we'll go from there. Go from there. Now, let me, let me go a little bit more about the batting average. I'm trying to help your players hit your highest batting average. Like the batting average has no brain. It doesn't know who's showing up. Right? It's not a confident batting average stat and a non-confident batting average stat. That's one stat. Right? When I was the mental coach with the Blue Jays, I talked to them and they spent a lot of money on Best Buy gift cards. We had three winners per week, per team. Whoever had the most quality at best got a gift card. And we had one guy go one for 20 and he won a card. Like, how does that happen? Right? He got one hit. He got a couple bunts down, helped the team. He got a couple runners over from second to third, helped the team. And he had seven balls right on the screws right at somebody. He was 12 for 20. And that's going to get you a card. Because that pitcher's driving a Mercedes too, bro. Right? It's, it's not like, oh, just flip it up there and I'm going to, you know, have good at bats. And when you get your guys having good at bats and, and, and playing every day like it's opening day and, and changing what you think success is, it's not getting a hit. It's 90 against one. You know, I mean, Augie Garrido taught me that. He, he said, you know, most pitchers think, oh, me against you, buddy. And Augie said, no, it's 90 against one. So if it's 90 against one, and I'm a, if I'm a pitcher, I'm pissed off when you get a hit. And we think as hitters, we got to get a hit every at bat. And I believe that's where the trap of the game is. And, and when, when we, when we change what we think success is, you hit the ball hard, you win. You help your team win. You know, Paul Goldsmith, he's called me his whole career. He's one of the greatest kids ever. I'm so happy for him uh, to win his first MVP. In my opinion, he should have had three because he had two great years with the Dimebacks, and they gave it to a team, that, a guy that was on the winning team. And his, I, I shot him a text. I said, buddy, keep it rolling, man. Best competitor in the major leagues. And he shot me a text right back with a picture of him and Arenado on it. That I've called talk to his whole career and underneath it, it said, hit ball hard. You win. It's so simple, but we, we make it so hard because we think we got to get a hit to have success. And I'm telling you right now, buddy, when you change what you think success is, you hit the ball hard, you win. We have attainable goals, daily goals. Uh, we hunt speeds. We're not trying to hit the fastball curveball slide up change up. Oh, Oh, I think that's the second thing they get hitters out more than anything is they try and hit everything. They're not ready for anything. And they're basically two strike hit in the whole at bat. Right. If I told you here comes a fastball 100% and you can't put a good swing on it, then go play soccer, bro. We got to be able to do that. But I'm telling you sometimes, buddy, it's okay to sit off speed if you think you're going to get it. Like, how come we can hit the breaking ball machine in the cage and it turns invisible during the game? Because we know it's coming in the cage. Well, this is the one analytic that I would want. What's this guy throwing certain pitches? You know, it's when I talk to kids and I'll say, if you smoke a guy's fastball, your first at bat for a bomb or a double. And you come up your next at bat with runners on second and third. You think two out of three and be fastball or off speed. So why, why are we sitting fastball? You're looking for something you're not going to get. And when all of a sudden you start walking up the plate and then I don't give a crap mode about me. I don't care about my stats. I care about helping my team win the game. And now we're hunting speeds. The game's a little bit easier. Anybody want to ask Spring any questions? I got a question. Yeah, but CG, go ahead and then show yeah. me we got you next. Uh, Steve, good to be with you, my friend. Hey, um, talk to we talked about it in the last hour a little bit, but you probably have a little bit more, um, maybe a better solution for all of us in terms of observing performance anxiety and performance of it. And, how we help players overcome that. that? Well, I think too many players in, are, are playing with tension, anxiety, and pressure instead of calmness, toughness, focus, having fun. And I believe that when you change what you think success is, 
and, and we get rid of it. You know, it's one of my lines when I speak, you want to play with tension, anxiety, and pressure, go join the military because that's where that's at, God bless them. We're playing baseball. Nobody's in trouble. And too many of these kids are playing this game like it's a three-hour timeout, like they're in trouble, you know. And, and it really, really comes, you know, from parents who have the best intentions for their kids. And now all of a sudden the kid's playing with tension, anxiety, and pressure. Oh, now I'm playing with, for Johnny Testosterone coach, you know, trying to win the Bird King Championship at 10 at all costs. And, and this, for me, you know, if you can get your players playing – you know, with te- without tension, anxiety, and pressure, playing with calmness, toughness, and focus. And the number one thing that you have to have so you did play at the highest level out of those three things, you better, have, you better have toughness, right? I'm playing a game where I do everything right and baseball says I suck. I do nothing right, and now I feel like I suck, and now I'm supposed to compete with confidence. How do you do it? I know how you do it. You play every day like it's opening day, and you play an out and give a crap mode about me. It's not about me. It's about me helping my team. Those are two completely different players, and we have fun. It's one of my favorite lines that too many, too many of these kids are playing this game like it's a three-hour timeout, like they're in trouble. Nobody's in trouble. And, and, we, and, and I believe it starts with the parents. You know, I made a parent audio and to try and help parents. I mean, too many kids quit this game at 13 years old because of the pressure that's put on them by the one who loves them the most. Us parents and Johnny Whackjob yelling at my 10-year-old. And all of a sudden, the kid's like, I don't even want to play anymore. And the parent's like, what happened? I'm like, I know what happened. You were a whack job. That's what happened. And, when, and if we could just give them some freedom so they don't quit at 13 with their little kid body, you know, and, and they're 100 pounds away from their man body. But too many of these parents and, and, and coaches have their kid in a microwave instead of an oven. And I love that analogy. Man, we got to put these kids in an oven. When I was with the Blue Jays and we'd, we'd sign a guy for a million bucks and he'd pop his first one for 20 and walk, walk back to the dugout like somebody stole his puppy, then you're like in pout mode. And I'm just like, Man, we better hope that's immaturity and not makeup because there's the difference. And until the kid's taught that it's okay not to get three hits today, I give them permission not to get three hits. I give you permission not to be perfect, right? I need you to be the best competitor on the field with an attainable goal to hit the ball hard and help your team win. And now it's just like, oh, thank you. You can just hear the kid just breathe because, you know, he's 18 years old. He thinks he's the next next Mike Trout because he just signed for a million dollars. And Mike Trout's a freak, right? I said, it's okay to be a 25 year old big leaguer. I said, if I, if I told you that you could be a big leaguer here for 10 years at 25 years old and, and guaranteed 100% deal or no deal, their initial mindset is, Oh, I want to be 22, 23. I'm like, that's not the question. 25 years old, guaranteed big leaguer. And they say, yes, that's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's seven years. You ain't playing in the big leagues. That's seven years for you to learn how to get great at being a better competitor than you are a player. That's seven years learning how to get great at being a better base runner, a better defender, a better teammate, right? Now we got 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. And that, that's when I retired at 34. So there's your 10 years. And you just feel the kids just saying, oh, thank you. But we all want it right now. We all, and when you, when you think you have to get a hit to have success and you think you have to hit 300, so that's what killed me. My first six, seven years, I always felt I had to hit 300 to be a big one. And yeah, I did do everything right and go over four. I see that bad average go from 290 to 280 to 270. And it's when I said I don't care anymore, I still hit between 260 and 290, but my production doubled because I, I didn't care anymore. I was a better competitor ever at that. I wanted the fifth at that. This is when you know you get what I'm talking about when you're over four, four strikeouts and you look at that lineup in the ninth and I need two guys to get on so I can be the hero instead of, oh crap, two guys get on, I got to hit again. But what happens on, on day number two, and you're 0 for 4 the first game, now you're 0 for 2, and now in your mind you're 0 for 6, and you're letting yesterday's bad game mindset play today, and that's a trap. I got a new game, new pitcher, new hero every single day that we play. And when I, I, I spoke to the uh, University of Texas, I agreed to them. I never met them. It was 2012. I knew Tommy Nicholson. I didn't know how they were doing. I said, hey, Tommy, you want me to speak to your team? He said, Spring, we need you at the beginning of the year. If we go 6-0 and the last six games of the season, we don't make our conference championship. Top eight teams made it. He said, Augie's not going to pay you. I said, I'll do it for free. I want to meet Augie. So Augie's like, what do you say, Abraham? So I went in there, could not have spoke better. Same speech I give every single time. I'm like Millie Vanilli, CJ, one-hit wonder, bro. And I, I couldn't have spoke better. And uh, I was about ready to leave, and Tommy's like, Augie wants to see you again. So I go back in there and he's like, okay, buddy, we're going to pay you for that. And I want you, I want you in here next year for three days. 
I'm like, perfect. I went in there for three days, three months later, the same exact team with freshmen and not another person on it. That was one game away from the national champ or that was, that didn't make their conference championship was one game away from the national championship, the same exact team because they got 25 confident players showing up every single day. Like it's opening day. And I don't give a crap what about me. I agree. It'll tell me it's his favorite quote. He's ever heard a coach say my favorite compliment from a coach coming from him. He said, that's brilliant. You, you play like oh, it's opening day every day and get 25 of your buddies doing the same thing. It's freedom. It's freedom from yourself. You know, it's fun. Oh, buddy. That's right, man. It's so fun. Thank you. I mean, I, I love what I teach. I'm, I'm as consistent as, as anybody. I, I wish I had mechanical stuff when I was playing. Like I said, I bailed, I lunged, I had a bad eye, but I could hit because I was a better competitor than I was a player. And that's where we need to be. And that guy that was one for 20 with the Blue Jays, I got a card. That guy's name was Kevin Pilar, right? And the next time you guys think you're getting hosed a little bit, this guy had a 54-game hitting streak as a junior in college and did not get drafted. There should have been 50 scouts fired, right? You don't luck into 54. You luck into three or four. And we took him as a senior in the 32nd round. And for $1,000, and he, he was the second guy in his draft to get to the big leagues. And he said, Spring, I had your stuff since I was 16 years old. And you know, too many players let their mind get in the way of their ability instead of help their ability. And if we could get our, our players to, to get out of their own way, now, now we got something going on. And, you know, I, I spoke at the ABCA three times in front of 6,000 coaches. Same speech I'm giving tonight is how do we get 25 confident players showing up on the coach? When you give them freedom not to be perfect and you give them freedom not to get three hits that game, you got competitor on the field, now we're good. Love it, Spring. Uh, Shelby's got her hand. Shelby, Shelby, fire away. And if anybody that's not on mute, please make sure you mute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, I heard a football game back there. <laughs> hey, I found your CD 10 years ago when I was still in college. And I remember I, you. Telling me. Yeah, I got it from somebody. Went from a 270 to a 330. So I'm I'm a I'm a, I'm a head saw a uh, juice uh using the same thing you away. You know, you touched on it parents on it Michelle, you're break, you're breaking up on me. I could hear about every other word. See, see. You know, I'm dealing with I'm dealing with their own way, their parents their own, their own, and then with you know, junior, you know, junior. How do I get them to buy it? Them to buy it? Yeah, you go over four, 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 four. You know, they're relying on that. You know, well, I, 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 got, I got about half of what you said, but I think you're talking about how do you get your players to get out of their own way on, on stats. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying stats are evil. Stats, stats make me feel a certain way. And, and the only stat that I want you to care about as a coach is how many games in a row did you get 25 confident players showing up? That's it. That's the only stat. Because it doesn't mean you get three hits. It means the right girls are playing tonight. And when you give your, your girls permission not to be perfect, we're going to have fun. We're going to play every day like it's opening day. I, I believe that you're going to get the right girls playing. About maybe about man, maybe 15 years ago now, I, I spoke at University of Notre Dame and they set me up something that night, and the girls' softball team showed up. Right? I never spoke to girls, but I'm thinking in my mind, hitting, sitting, same exact thing. They're competing, and they bought into a quality at bat thing. They got rid of stats, and I called up Lizzie Lemire afterwards. I said, "How did everything go?" And she's like, "You don't know." I said, I was embarrassed. I said, no, what, what happened? Everything okay? She's like, the word batting average was not said the whole year, and they led the nation in hitting. Just by not caring about it. You know, get great at lining up. That's what I tell my players. When somebody asks you what you do for a living, you tell them you hit balls hard for a living. And if you get a hit, it's a bonus. But when you get your girls to change what they think success is, you hit the ball hard, you win. You know, 90% of a quality at bat, in my mind, is how you feel when you walk up to the plate. Do I know I could hit or am I hoping to hit? Because if you got girls that aren't sure, you know, I mean, it's like I said, line, what comes first, the confidence or success? For me, if you have success with no confidence, that's called luck. We need to have confidence. We need to believe that we could hit, not get a hit, 
We need to believe that we could hit. And now we're hunting speeds, right? I'm not trying to hit the fastball curveball side of changeup. Oh, oh. You know, it's like my blackjack analogy. Mark Trumbo said it's his favorite analogy ever. I said, too many hitters hit like, hit, hit like they got 16 on them. Oh, oh. I said, bro, we're splitting aces. I don't have to swing. And I, and, I, and I learned this from girls softball because I spoke to the University of Oregon with Mike White four years in a row. And, you know, you got that girl that has the rise ball. I said, you better be hunting that rise ball because it's going to be easier for to look up here and adjust to the knee high rather than look for the knee high. Now she elevates the rise ball and you're underneath it. And I told that to Trumbo. I go, bro, when you're sitting on the fastball, look for it up in the zone. It's going to be easy for to look up there and adjust to the knee high. And he said, really? You're holding that one back after seven years? And he has 48 bombs on the high fastball, taking a controlled, violent swing. Exactly. That's what hit is. It's controlled violence. It's not violent, violent. It's not controlled, controlled. It's controlled, violent act. You hit a baseball or a softball. I believe in breathing. I believe in slowing the game down. You know, and, and you're going to like this, Shelby, right? I know cheering's huge in, in softball, right? We got all our cheers. Well, they, they agreed with me. The University of Oregon girls, the, first, the three hitters that are hitting that at bat, that inning, I don't want them cheering. Mm-hmm. I, want them, I want them breathing. I want them slowing the, slowing the game down. I want to make 95 look 80, right? And, and when you have a good heartbeat, right, your girls are going to be their best athlete with their heartbeat between 60 and 80 at all times. Right. The only time I want your heartbeat over 80 on a softball field is when you hit a triple. Mm-hmm. Loose, loose muscles are quick muscles. And so how do I make 95 look 85? I slow my feet down. I slow my heartbeat down. Right. You want to make 95 look 105? Speed your feet up. Get your heartbeat going. That'll look 105. And when we start thinking like that, oh, yeah, and you gave him permission not to be perfect. You gave him permission not to get three hits. We're going to have fun. I am here to help my team win the game, not me get three hits. Mm-hmm. You, get 20, you get 20 girls buying into that and getting that bunt down and, and, and getting a runner over and playing good defense. You know, how come when you go 0 for 4 as a, as a player or 0 for 3 in softball, but you make an absolute web jump with the bases loaded, two outs to save three runs, that's not considered 1 for 4, 3 RBIs. Mm-hmm. You know, as a coach, that, that's the same exact effect as a three-run double. So we need to get our players to be total players, right? We're, we're in such a, a showcase mentality right now. And, 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 you know, as a coach, everything's about showcase. And, 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 you know, in baseball, you know, it's about exit velocity. It's about arm strength. Teach them how to play the game. Teach them how to win. You know, you know when it shows up? In the playoffs. And you got Swarber bunning with two strikes to try and help his team. You know, I get what he was trying to do, but he should have been trying to hit a bomb, you know, with his power. But when, when you play to win the game instead of me get three hits, it, it's amazing uh, what happens. You know, and now we got 20 girls thinking the same way. And it's like I said, as a coach, if, if I'm coaching again, I'm asking every player before every single game, how you, where's your confidence level at? Are you, are you going to compete with confidence tonight? Are you going to let yesterday's bad game mindset play today? Mm-hmm. That's where it's at. If this game wasn't about the mind, and 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 then then every first round pick should pay ten years in the big leagues and they don't, right? And guys like Kevin Pillar, who did sign for a thousand bucks, shouldn't play there. But it's all about can you know everybody says oh you know get them to compete, no get them to compete with confidence. Two different things. They're going to compete because they're in the game. How do you compete with confidence? You give them permission not to be perfect. You give them permission not to get three hits. We're, we're playing to win this game today. I got a new game, new picture, new hero today. And this is why the opening day mindset. See this wristband right here? I'm going to send you some, Shelby. Oh, I love right? that. Because we, we go way back and compete with confidence. And it says opening day every day. And when you, when you get your girls to buy into that, you know, now their talent comes out. Mm-hmm. So. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Shelly, for the question. Um, Austin Snyder, my man, hand up. Uh, I think you're on mute, Austin, if you can. I should be unmuted by now. There you go. Okay. How's it going, Steve? How you doing, Alan? Hey, how you doing, Alan? Good, brother. Good. Thanks for putting us together, guys. Um, Steve, you... I've actually found myself now throughout this call, and you know me a little bit, you know that I know your stuff pretty well. Um, 
I want to know if you have anything new, any new saying that you got. Any new um, saying? Well, you know what? I, I try to come up with some new stuff, but it's like I said, I'm like Millie Vanilli, man. You say something I like, but I'm going to give you credit once and then it's mine. Yeah. You know, it's like CJ said. I mean, we, we're, we're learning all the time, you know, and I'll come up with new stuff. But I think the, the main thing that I've learned in the last 20 years of doing this, that stats are evil. Stats yeah. make you feel a certain. I don't care if you're hitting 400 or 300, you know, you're not going to hit 400. So all of a sudden they, your batting average goes down and now the wrong guy starts playing. The only stat that I tell these guys to care about when I talk to the, the major league officers that call me, how many games in a row did you compete with confidence and have fun? That's it. Okay. You know, it's almost, it's almost like my stuff is too simple. There's got to be more. It, it is, man. There's, there's, I know. There's got to be what, – what's the analytics spring? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know what analytics are for me? Another thing to make me feel like Yeah. Like That's I'm why I haven't them. got anything new because it, it still works and it's, I mean, 20 years old almost, you know, 30. Yeah, no, buddy, it's right. And I, I try to, you know, I'm always learning. I'm always, you know, I'm going to go to the ABCA this year. It's been a couple of years since COVID. And, you know, I, I mean, I remember watching uh, uh, Ken Reviza and he opened up a, uh, a conference and his opening line was coaches if you don't hear another thing i say in the next 40 minutes he said you better remember that what this one thing that players need to know that you care before they care what you know awesome. and i never heard that before i, I text that thing because i'm a dumbass and i'll forget it you know and you know i give ken credit once and that's mine i mean i told him i said i'm gonna steal that line he said go ahead i stole it from somebody you know oh, when I we're learning me all the time well, I love it, buddy. I mean, I, I hope you do. I mean, I, I believe it's right. And it's, you know, it's just so, you know, we get so caught up in negative. We so we get so caught up in what we can't do instead of what we can do. But I know in baseball and softball, you, know, you better have attainable goals, daily goals. And not, I got to hit three. I'll get a kid, I'll, I'll come in, what are your goals? And he's like, oh, I want to hit 300 with 20 bombs and 80 RBIs, really. Okay, well, what about when you start the season one for 20, buddy? How are you feeling? Now we're in right. catch up mode. And now it's like you're chasing stuff. And I don't want to chase stuff. Uh, I, I, the, my favorite line I ever taught Austin was you play every day like it's opening day. Cause I played opening day. I played mm -hmm. 14 of them. Bro. I was 100% confident. Yeah. And then what happened? Day number two shut up. Yeah. And yeah. A, lot, a lot of times I'd be four for four. And then all of a sudden you're over four and you get the stats involved and you know, it dictates how you feel. I used to think that baseball was about the mind, the approach, and mechanics, all three important in that order. I've changed it, man. I think it's about the approach, the mind, and mechanics in that order. Because I don't care how confident you are, and I don't care how good your mechanics are. If your approach sucks, you're going to lose your confidence, and your mechanics are going to break down. And I, you know, you know when I could hit a couple speeds at the same time? When I faced a lefty. I was a right-handed hitter. I, I, if I thought fastball away and brought the plate back a little bit, and now I recognize the curveball, and I haven't shifted through my middle end swing. I could hit two speeds. But when I got, you know, some guy throwing 98, and it might be on my head, and it might be a slider in the dirt, I ain't hunting both, yeah. you know, until I, until I get two strikes. You know, that's one of my favorite lines I just came up with, too. If you're trying to hit the fastball curveball slide of changing oh, oh, you're basically two strike hitting the whole lot back. So yeah. That's my two strike. I heard you say that one. That one was kind of a newer one today, so – Thank yeah, you. If I'm, yeah, buddy, if I'm sitting on that fastball, that thing can be at my knee or my neck, and I'm trying to drive it. I'm going to take a controlled line slam, attack the inside part of the baseball. I don't think we talk about that enough. You yeah, know, you we're so into that. that. We like, well, I like we're, we're, that. Well, we're, we're so into launch angle. You know what? How about ground ball angle with a runner on third with the infield back? How about that angle to score a run? How about hit ball hard you win angle? How about, you know, you attack the inside part of a baseball and take a control violent swing. Now it's about contact point. You know, I don't want you to hit an inside pitch to the opposite field. I don't want you to hit a bomb to your pull power, but the contact points on the inside part of the plate. And mm -hmm. so when we, you know, when we, I, I believe that you could look away and hit in. You cannot look in and hit away. I believe that we need to start teaching uh, hitting over power. Right now we're teaching power over hit ability. Absolutely. Scouting, if you can't hit, what happens when you're a better hitter? Your power plays more, but we don't think that way. Oh, I want to hit, I want to hit 40 home runs. Oh, we're, we're teaching 10 year old kids to have, you know, a uh, friggin', you know, 40, 40 home run power swings. 
No, now we got a fly ball. You know, yeah. How about each? How, how about being a line drive machine? How about being a 200 hit guy? You yeah. know, and, and there's more, more stadiums than not. You know, if you're a good hitter, you're going to hit 20, 30 bombs if you're a good hitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, everybody, you know, not, we're not all playing in Petco. You know, there's some band boxes in the big leagues. Yeah. And I, I believe that you can look away and hit in. You can't look in and hit away. Thank you. Appreciate that, Steve. We got to get you four way, man. Four way, man. Love, buddy. Thank you. Alan? I love it, man. Um, I want to keep it open for other people. people. Question-wise, question wise. Brian Eisenberg, Eisenberg. In, the house. in the house. Brian there? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. There you go, Steve. Buddy. It's I'm been a while since I've seen you down here in Texas. Yeah, it's about time. Let's go. <laughs> so here, here's the interesting question, right? Because as Alan said, you know, he's seen you speak like 50 times. I've seen you speak, I think, three, four times. You've done this so many times. What seems to be the most common question you get after every time you present? And, and why do you think it's so common? Well, I, I don't know if there's questions, but I usually I get a parent come up to me and said, okay, that was awesome. Now I need to go apologize to my kid. You know, I, I believe that parents are the kid's number one coach because you live with them, right? If I need a plumber, I'm not calling no one or not. I'm calling a plumber. If my kid wants to be a, a major league college baseball player, worst case scenario, I, I'm getting a hold of me. I'm getting a hold of Alan. I'm getting a hold of guys that have some credibility that, you know, have a history. You know, I, I and I don't mean it boastfully, but if I if my stuff sucked, I ain't I ain't still going. You know, and and I, trust me, I want to learn. I think the best thing I what I ever did in my life is I put what I know on an audio, audio audio tape at the time. <laughs> you know, I had like five hundred tapes in my garage. I went out of style the next day. I, I want to hug the guy that made the digital download. You know, I, I I love the line that we give ourselves way too much credit to remember what we're what we're taught. You know, you got my audios. I mean, you're going to the yard. You're going to a game. I made my new one, uh, Q15. It's 15 minutes of me talking to, you know, to, to pump a kid up before a game to get his mind right. You know, and, and it's like I said, I mean, uh, batting practice flips and tee work, it's important, but it's checkers. We're all good at that. The chess game starts at seven. The game, you know, can you play chess? Can you play the game? You know, and when you talk to college coaches, their, their number one thing is these kids coming out of high school don't know how to play the game because everything is showcase oriented. You know, how hard did you throw? How, what was your exit velocity? What was your 60? Instincts are everything in baseball. If you don't have instincts to play this game, Brian, then, then, then tell that kid to get his resume ready because he ain't playing in the big leagues. It's hard enough to play in the big leagues with instincts if you don't have them. And when do you learn instincts? In my opinion, I think you learn them at 12, 13, 14. You know, when you're playing with your buddies, when you're playing, you know, in, in the backyard or whatever, and or you're watching baseball and, you know, if, if you can't be a, a tick above uh, average defender, stop dreaming about playing in the big leagues, right? I mean, we, we have to become a, a total base runner. I mean, a total baseball player and, and base running is included. You know, you find, you tell me you got a good base runner. He's probably got instincts to play the game. When I, when I was scouting with the Dimebacks when I stopped playing, and I was a national cross checker, and I'd see the top three round guys, but I had a vote on all 50 rounds, and I'd get the area guys coming in talking about the 50 round guy. I promise you, I asked every single scout on every single player how are his instincts to play the game. And if he fudged this much without saying great, I had a hard time voting for that guy or pulling for him. Because like I said, it's hard enough to play in the big leagues with instincts if you don't have them. You know, it, it's it's not happening. You know, and as far as questions, I, I, I truly believe if, if you told me that I could speak to 100 parents or 111 year olds, keep the 11 year olds at home. I want parents. I, I think the parent needs to know what we know. The parent needs to, to learn, uh, you know, how to 
you know, I, I, I tell a story about I, I play tennis and I with Alan and I my mixed doubles partner's boyfriend. I never met him after a year. And he, his opening line to me is, hey, I coach my seven-year-old trap ball team. I'm like, nice. I said, so, you know, you're coaching the biggest self-esteem destroying sport in the world, right? He's like, what? He's like, yeah, you said, you know, makes it there. He wants to cry. The other team's cheering. Doesn't like that. Coach Young, that's you. This guy right home with you. So for one year, your seven-year-old who wants ice cream is going to get beat up four times and get ready for him to quit at 13 years old. And we got interrupted. I don't see the guy for, for two months. I see him downtown in Huntington watching Trumbo play with the Angels. And I see him. He walks right up to me and said, dude, you changed my life. I said, what are you talking about? I said, when you told me my son's playing the biggest self-esteem destroying sport in the world, I said, you hit me right between the teeth. I can't even speak. I thank God we got interrupted. Two months later now, I'm the most positive coach on the field. When I hear another coach, your parent yelled at seven or like cringe. Me and my son, got, me and my son go get an ice cream after the game. And my ex-wife, she wants to remarry me because she can't believe it's me. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. <laughs> but this is who we are as parents. I wanted my son to be the next Mike Trump. Right. My son's a great carpenter right now. I got two grandkids. Awesome. You know, not everybody's Mike Trout, but you cannot tell me that you can't get a college, ed college education out of this game if you have any ability. There's too many colleges across the country that are looking for baseball players that have instincts. A little bit of body strength. You don't need to be six foot two. Like, what's L2 today? Six five? He's like five foot seven with a good pair of cleats on, and he can shrink two inches and be a big leader. And, and this is where we need to we need to get our kids. And so that's why, in my opinion, it's the greatest sport ever, because I can be five six five eight. And hold on, man, I'm getting called. Oh, are you guys there still? All right. Uh, I got I got a question. Yeah, but Steve, you've done an awesome job over the years. Keeping this, keeping this simple, straightforward, simple, straightforward and understandable. Um, what drove you to do that? Well, well, I had a guy named Tommy McCraw, and I believe that this guy had a big impact in my life. I was in AAA for my fourth year, and every time this guy was around, he was just, you know, I mean, he had me thinking right. And But he'd come in for three days out of the month, and i carry it for three days because I'm a dummy. I'd forget. So the next time he came in town, he was nice enough to talk to me about me. I brought a tape recorder to his room, and for 20 minutes, it was what he thought I needed to do to play in the big leagues. And it changed my life. It goes back to what I was talking about is we give ourselves too much credit to remember what we're taught. And so I, I became an agent. Don't ask me why I did that, but I was an agent. I wanted my kids to get a mental game. So I was in the car, and the car door was opening, you know, ding, 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 you know, fast forward right down the middle of something else. I gave my brother who played six years of pro baseball. I had him listen to it. He was like, dude, man, that's good. And then clean that up. And so I went to the recording studio. I didn't even know what I had. And I, I just talked for 30 minutes about what I wanted these guys to learn. And I gave one to George Horton, who's, God bless him, man. He, big impact in my life. And, and he had his whole team listen to it five hours before they played Miami in Miami. And Miami was the number one team in the country. And they scored like 10 a game. He said, Spring, you change the way we think. They went to the World Series. And so that's when I figured out I felt I had something. And so I just start speaking and, and just spreading the word. And, uh, it's like I said, I mean, I, I, I love the line that we give ourselves way too much credit to remember what we're taught. I gave my whole spiel to a, a group of 200, come back in two weeks, what I said. And they're going to get, oh, the bad average and something about marrying an athlete. So your kid might be a big leader. I mean, that's what they remember. You know, so I believe that, you know, you know, go to qualityatbats.com and get my bundle. It's the best. I mean, we're, we're spending 75 bucks on a half an hour flip session once a week. And I don't mean a boat flu. I got something that's just changing lives. I mean, you know, when I, when I, when I talk about the players, I get, you know, Arenado, Goldsmith, AJ Pollitt, you know, Ben Zobers got my stuff when he was 25 years old in double A and two years later, he's a major league all-star. He said it changed, you know, I met him at a Christian retreat. He couldn't believe I was there. You know, so the impact that you're having on people is is what I like. I, I figured a long time ago, bud, when I when I when I try to help people, I make money. When I try to make money, I don't make money. <laughs> so I just love what I do. And anybody out there, man, I would really would love to. I, I wish I could speak to every program in the country. And I promise you, it is the same speech, same stuff every time. But you don't know who it's going to impact. That's the best thing. And it's like what I said earlier. It almost sounds too simple. 
Like, no, there's got to be something else. I'm like, no. Do four things every day. Walk up the plate with confidence with an attainable goal to hit the ball hard. Attack the inside part of a speed you're looking for. And if we had a game tonight, the only thing that you need to focus on is helping my team win the game. And if you get great at doing those four things, you're not going to underachieve. See, there's no such thing as an overachiever in the big leagues. No such thing. Dustin Pedroia was not an overachiever. He was a really, really good player. But you know how many underachievers there are? Do you know how many first-round picks can't get out of A ball because of their mind? And, and like I said, too many players let their mind get in the way of their ability instead of help their ability. And that sounds like a psychologist. I can't spell psychology. You know, I know it starts with an S, bro. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it's funny because you know, I was thinking when you were talking about, talking about, you know, people were saying about Thing about changing and it was like changing and it was like amazing how there's genius how there's listening and simplicity. Mm-hmm. So, so I think that's I think that's the reason why you've stayed so consistent over the years. Uh well, you know, you know, the, best, you know the best thing about it, the best thing about it and what we're doing and what you've done, you don't even know the impact that you're having. Like you personally and hopefully me. I mean you know, really, Ben's over, huh? I'm at a Christian retreat. I'm in a seven-man group. I don't know anybody there. I said, my name's Steve Spurn. I'm the mental coach of the Blue Jays. And I see this 20-year-old kid smiling. And I go, you got my CD, don't you, buddy? He's like, I can't believe you're here. He said, I can't wait till I tell my brother-in-law you're here. He's going to flip. I said, who's your brother-in-law? He said, Ben Zobers. So I'm like, he's got it? He's like, oh, wait till he finds out you're here. He's going to flip. I'm like, yeah, he owes me 20 bucks. I want to meet him. He burned my car. I'm kidding. And uh, <laughs> he, gave me the, he gave me the biggest hug I've ever had. He, I, I believe the Cubs owe me a World Series ring. <laughs> we'll get right on that, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, we got we got Sarge, a Jager Sports rep in the house. Sarge, there he is. Hi, buddy. What's up, Spring? Yeah, buddy. How are you? I'm good, man. I just want to know one thing. One thing. <laughs> what do you got? Are you coming to Nashville? I am coming to Nashville, buddy. Me and uh, I'm going to – yeah, buddy. I'm going to come with Trent Mongero's coming, my buddy. and You know, he's one of the top infield coaches in the country, man. Him and Nate, and they do a great job, and they're my buddies. And, you know, it's like I said, man, it, you know, parents, man, we go into cages and flips and tea work. And, yeah, it's important. But we got to learn the whole game, man. And, it, like, what you guys are doing, you got a good arm? Trust me, bro. You're going to be able to play a couple positions, right? If you're not, if you're, if you're not a tick above average defender, stop grooming about playing in the big leagues. There's 30 DHs in the country right now getting paid, and it's probably not you. But if you, why did Kevin Pillar get his third chance in the big leagues? As good as he was in the minor leagues, big leagues get a different game, as we all know. And he hit under 200 his first couple of times. Why did he get the third and fourth shot? Because he's a Gold Glove center. And, you know, and when you can throw and, and that's going to make your defense better. And, you know, it's it's being a baseball player. The biggest compliment that you could ever get is this guy's a baseball player. This guy's a gamer, man. I want that guy on my team. And I played 11 years in triple A. And I don't play there if I was an idiot. And I don't play there if I couldn't play a little bit of defense. And, you know, my first 10 years that I played, every team I was on was in the playoffs. It was awesome. And the last four years, no playoffs, it sucked. How do you have fun? You win. I, I, I'm not into everybody gets a trophy, bro. And I don't mean they come off as holier than now either, because I got kicked out of a 12-year-old All-Star game. <laughs> Freaking up, I was so bad. <laughs> I said, bro, could you try not to be a factor in the game, please? And he threw me out. <laughs> I didn't even yell. <laughs> you didn't, I love it. I yell. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even yell. Donnie Mitchell was there too. My boss for the Diamondbacks was like, "All right, let's go to a game." <laughs> uh, I had a player that will remain nameless in AAA uh, got suspended. He actually went into the stands and attacked the mascot. Oh, because the, the mascot—he was on the road. And the mascot came over behind him and grabbed him in head. His hat and pushed it down. Pushed it down. This guy, I won't say his name. This guy is one of the nicest down earth guys you'll ever meet. Win the stands. Win the stands. I did, dude. I swore to you. I said, "Can you try not to be a factor in the game, please?" Hey, before we get moving on, we got Greg. Thank you, Greg, for the proper hand raising, buddy. 
I was out. Uh, yeah, I messed that up. My bad. I finally figured it out. Thanks. Um, Steve, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, that you threw hard in. Uh, is there any other thing you throw hard? And then I have a second. And then I have a second. My son likes to lift weights. Like so very bench press. Bench press. Uh, is uh, not good for the eight point, point with a bar. With a bar. So, so is incline so bench press better, better or dumbbell, or dumbbell bench, bench? In other words, and that's is that a detriment? Is that a detriment? How's his arm right now? Does he have a good arm? Uh, yeah, he just turned 14, and he's a catcher. He's not a pitcher. And so he also plays football, and he's into the weight thing. And I know the top school program lifts a lot of weights, but I didn't know. I heard bench press is not good. Uh, well, I, okay, well, you're, you're, you're talking to a guy that's going to agree or disagree with you because I bench press. I'm into bench pressing, bro. I, I'm into body strength. But just make sure. And I was into the bar. Like, you know, I, I – I could bench press 300 pounds. I believe this move right here is the same move as this right here with the hands, you know, but just make sure after he benches, this is huge. Make sure that he hangs from a bar every single time he, he benches. So you don't get too tight up in here. Like, you know, that 300 pinch I used to bench turned into Ted, but now I mean, when I was playing pro, this move right here, I benched all the time with the bar. Well, why would I want a dumbbell? I don't get this. Why would I want a dumbbell and all of a sudden it's too much weight and now all of a sudden I strain my shoulders? I want my chest to get in the way. You know what I'm saying? I want it to get in the way and go up. As long as he's stretching, right? Make sure he's doing grippers and, and hand strength, you know, because the hands you can do every day, you can't bench it every day. But you're talking to a guy, I want him. I, I got no problem with him benching. As long as he's hanging and stretching, so he doesn't get too tight up in here. I believe that's total body strength. I'm in. I, I believe that body strength is everything. You cannot be, you know, Altuve's got bionic wrists. If he's five foot six and weak, he ain't who he is. You know, I'm I'm into I'm into lifting. I'm into doing it the right way. But I mean, like I said, you're talking to old school. I'm 62, bro. We used to bench all the time, and with a bar or Nautilus machines. You know, I'm not into to, and somebody's gonna call. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Oh, whatever. I, I don't care. I, I teach what I did. You know, when you know when when I remember getting off that subject, I remember I was at the best bat speed of my life one day, and I'm feeling it straight back, and I'm popping it up seven seconds, and this guy's thinking he's blowing it by me, and my buddy Jeff McKnight, he said, "Sprint, you're collapsing a little too early, man." He said, "Visualize that your TR7, that car." So when I teach hitting now, I go, this is the roof of the car and this is the hood of the car, right? This is going to collapse. You want to stay from the, away from the early collapse. It made so much sense to me. And I knew this guy thought he was blowing up by me. Going 95, sitting fastball, bomb dead center. So that's why I teach. But I only teach what I, you know, what I did. And I can only do, you know, what I did. And, you know, and I, like I said, I believe, you know, you want to slow the game down. You want to. You know, I, I think the breathing, I don't think we talk about that enough. Alan does, uh, but not a lot of people talk about breathing and, you know, making 95 look 85. You know, it, it, one, one of my favorite drills when I was, was playing is when a pitcher was throwing a bullpen, just go stand about two feet off so the guy doesn't drill you and just watch it with a quiet head. And you'd be like, man, I smoked that. And then all of a sudden we get in the box and now we, our, our heart beats up and now we, everything speeds up. And when, you know, when you watch them, you know, there's very few hundred pences in the world, bro, that, that, that can play like this, you know, you know, it, when I go and watch a game and I see a player like this, it actually makes me hyperventilate in the stands. It, it affects my breathing. So slow the game down. But as far as your son with the lift, and he's 14 years old, you know, just make sure that he's, he's doing it the right way. And this is, I think body strength and flexibility is, is the best thing that you could have. Awesome. If, Thank if, you. If, you don't want him to where he can't, you know, comb his hair, you know, because he's so tight. And this is why the hanging, you know, is just huge. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you did that that helped you throw really hard besides one ball? Besides one ball. But yeah, you're talking to a guy that was 4'11", 90 pounds in high school. I was five eight, a buck forty. I'm not supposed to throw hard. You know. Yeah. You know what helped me? 
I worked on the canoes for two years at Disneyland, right? I'm pulling people around doing this and this and this. And then I grew four inches when I was 20. And, but, you know, that's from body strength. It's body strength and long toss. And I'm telling you right now, I played long toss. I never did abandon my life, you know, and I'm sure that would be even better. But I could throw, I played with one guy from the infield that I felt had a better arm than me. And that was Mike Blowers. He was like six foot three and he had a freaking bazooka, but it, it wasn't like that far apart. Awesome. You know, thank you. And thank you, Alan. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and as a catcher, right? Make sure every single time he plays catch, he gets it out of his hand. Get it out of your hand. Don't be this, this, this. Get it out of your hand. Shuffle your feet. Get it out of your hand. Because I, I played with a couple guys. One guy had a, a below average arm, and one guy had a plus arm. And the below average arm threw out more guys than the plus arm because of quick release. So if you're always working on getting a hand, getting a hand out, well, you know, and now you got a plus arm, it's going to be really good. I, I played with a guy named Ron Karkovice. <laughs> I was in awe watching this guy come out of the shoot because he had both. Awesome. Thank you for your advice. You're welcome, Greg. bro. Sorry, Spring. And Greg, it's a perfect segue because Randy Sullivan just popped in and he is really an expert. He's the expert's expert in this field. So I know Randy, so I want to answer answer that question. I'm not going to be able to get him back. I'm getting a lot. I'm getting a lot. Uh, so if you're getting my feedback, I apologize. Um, um, so Spring, what we're going to do is uh, segue to Randy. Randy, do you have any last? Last. Actually, you no. Know sorry, Actually, Greg. You know sorry, Greg. Greg's got his hand up. Greg's Greg, his hand up. Greg. Fire, away, fire away, brother. Hey, thank you, Alan. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate you. You appreciate you. You all want to touch on my question like five minutes ago. Um, you talk about breathing, what you look for, slow the game down, approach the plate with this sense of confidence or look of confidence. Do you teach or do you look for any specific pre-pitch routine in between pitch, that 10 to 20, 15, 20 seconds between pitches? Is there anything, especially for a high school player, is there anything that you teach in regards to that that is consistently, you want to see consistently done in between all those pitches? Thank you. Spring, you got to unmute yourself, brother. Well, I didn't mute myself. All right. Uh, I believe that hitting starts when uh, – can you hear me? Can you hear me, bud? Hello. We got you, bud. Yeah, we can, we can hear you, brother. We can hear you, brother. Okay. I, I believe when, like, when, when Ty McCry asked me when hitting started, and I said, uh, you know, when I'm in the on-deck circle and I can see the pitch really good, he said, spring hitting starts when you pick up the paper in the morning, you see who's pitch. You start visualizing stuff that missiles off the sky because the mind doesn't know the body's not doing it. So if I took half your team and I said, go visualize for four minutes, and the other half I said, go take batting practice for an hour, and you ask me who I think's going to have a better game, I'm going to take the guys that never had a bad, took a bad swing. That's how powerful the mind is. And so all of a sudden – I would start watching the pitcher. I don't have five at-bats a day anymore. I got 27 at-bats a day. If I'm hitting fifth, I got four before I even get up there in my mind. You know, and this is why I'm hunting speeds. This is why, you know, video on a pitcher two weeks ago is great. Watching every pitch he makes tonight is 10 times better. And so, you know, I'm really, really into to sitting, sitting on the fastball until it's time not to. Right? I, I don't want your kid hitting, sitting, breaking ball every single pitch unless he thinks it's coming. Right. And if, usually the good high school hitters, you know, they're probably two out of three off speed. So why am I sitting fastball? And so I, I just, you know, I, I that's when my, my production doubled when I started sitting on something I was going to get, not what I wanted to hit. Right. So tell your son to hunt the fastball till it's time not to slow the game down. Right. Pick up his release point. Right. The harder he throws, the slower your feet need to be. Right, a guy's throwing a hundred, and you got your foot up in the air with a high leg. It grows by you. 
right? And, and it's, in my DVD, I talk about hitting between four and six. The pitcher's one, the catcher's 10. It's my neutral stance at five. You with me? That pitcher gets about right here in his delivery. I got to get something back inside six and hitting up against four, right? If you leave your posture, it's not a strike. And I'm taking a controlled violent swing, you know? And it's going to be my pitch, not if. Right? Take the if out of it. Right, it's going to be my pitch, and like I said, hunt the high fastball. I crush the high fastball, and you know. So, the bottom line is watch the game, right? Yeah. Here, here's another thing: when you guys are watching a major league game on TV, get a piece of paper and a pencil with your son and write F for fastball, O for off speed on every single pitch. And I promise you, after the second inning, both of you guys will be way better because you're studying the test. The pitcher's the test. I'll give you my house in Huntington Beach if there's a chemistry test in the third inning of the next game. There won't be. The pitcher's the test. Keep your eyes on the pitcher. And that's what I love, that line, that video on a pitcher two weeks ago is great. Watching every pitch he makes tonight is 10 times better. I want to know what his out pitch is. Uh, any right-handed hitter up there, I guarantee you, I've never seen you play. Right on right, 70% of your strikeouts are chasing break and those aren't even strikes. That's all it is. That's Trumbo. That's Goldsmiths. It's everybody. So with two strikes, bring the plate back. It's almost like, how do you hit a breaking ball? You zone up, you load late. I knew the plate was right in front of me. In my mind, I bring it back by the catcher. I'm not timing 97. I'm timing 79. He throws me a fastball. Big deal. It's one pitch. We all know umpire suck. He might call it a ball. So I'm hunting the speed, right? And that, that's the same thing with two strikes. Think fastball away, about 70% in your mind. But you better have this in the back of your mind. I'm not trying to hit a bomb with two strikes. Get your bombs with count leverage. Oh, oh, one, oh, two, one, three, one. Not, not, oh, oh, two. Be a tough out. Put the ball in play. If you shifted on me, I would hit 700. I could let the ball get deep and shoot one to right, man. It, that's one of the biggest things ever that I, I've never figured out. We're down by a run. I got runners on second and third, and then I just need a ground ball to second. We win. I'm trying to hit a bomb. It's freaking nuts. Love it, Spring. I'm going to make a quick comment as we close down here on tracking, springing, tracking, tracking. tracking. I think I have to. Spring mentioned tracking, and I play in Sunday leagues till I was 45. 45. I muted, I muted Spring because I muted Spring to get feedback. Sorry, brother. And then I'll unmute. Then you can unmute it. Um, and if I wasn't pitching in that game, I, even if I was, if I could, I always, well, if I wasn't pitching, because obviously the other pitcher was getting loose, I would go down in the bullpen. I could not wait to get reps in and just track balls. And I actually wrote an article 20 plus years ago in collegiate baseball. Again, plug in collegiate baseball. I love Lou Pavlovich. Um, on, called batter's box management. And they're all mental drills, and they're essentially a lot of them is about tracking. Um, I took these drills to Oregon State in 2018. Uh, Tyler Graham, one of the hitting coaches, told me they were not the, the best drills he's ever seen. He said the best hitting drills he's ever seen. He said they're the best drills he's ever seen. Um, that guy won two national championships as a player and got to the big leagues, so I took that as a pretty good compliment. Um, so guys like Adley Rutschman and Trevor Larnick and Stephen Kwan, if you look at Stephen Kwan, he had a, a record this year for the first 50 games or 50 at-bats of pitches that he did not swing and miss on. Um, so these drills are all mental. They're all about tracking. And uh, spring kind of stimulated that idea. So it's called batter's box management. It's free. It's online. Um, but I will say this in closing with spring. Um, there's genius in the simplicity that I said earlier. And I, I am telling you, um, not here because he's my buddy to plug it, but if you do not own his DVD or his CD collection, he just sells it in a bundle now. I highly recommend you check it out. And Spring's the kind of guy, trust me, if you DM him, <laughs> you're going to get a, a response back in minutes unless he's golfing. So, um, and if he is golfing, you probably will hear from him quickly. So I would highly urge you that's why I had these great people on today because these people care and they're incredible resources. So please reach out to spring quality at bats.com is his website. And I assure you, if you've got a burning question, or you think of something three days from now, uh, reach out to him because you're going to get his 
full, we talked about with Scott Brown earlier, that comment about being present. Uh, spring is 100% present. Uh, and I want to throw one other plug because we're going to lead into Randy here in a second. Spring, I'll give you a chance to say good goodbye. But um, when, when, our, when our next discussion on pitching and movement and strength and conditioning is, is done at four, we're, we're technically done. Um, I know like Tamara is in here and maybe some other of you that might want to talk more mental game or, or how to implement meditation into your practice. Um, I know I saw Tracy here earlier. So uh, if you want to hang out a little bit, some of you have been on here all day and I so appreciate it. And I understand if you want to go, but uh, we'll probably keep the room open a little bit longer. And then also, as you may or may not know, is, is at five o'clock today, so an hour after we're done technically, uh, we are doing a huge contest. And the grand prize is, is uh, our whole complete competitor package program and 20 J bands. So if you already have J bands for your team and you want to donate them to another program, contest is between five and six P, uh, Pacific Standard Time. So if you didn't know about it, you're finding out about that now. So Spring, uh, let's have you wrap it up and then I'll do an intro for Randy. Hey, Randy. Hey, Randy. All right, buddy. Well, Alan, I love you, buddy. Thanks for having me on here. Uh, sorry I don't play tennis anymore, but I do play golf every 20 hours. And uh, yeah, guys, qualityatbats.com. Coupon code MLB40, everything I made for 40 bucks. I promise you, I will call you. I'll thank you. And if, you, if you're a baseball coach out there, you need a, a speaker for opening night or the, you know, or have me speak to your program, I do that. Just DM me on Twitter at Quality at Bats and uh, you get your kids competing with confidence, man. And, and parents out there with your kid, you put your kid in an oven, not a microwave. You think big picture. Perfect. Love you, Alan. Appreciate it. Love you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for doing this, buddy. See you. See you, brother.